All right, so I did get permission to film on the inside of the restaurant, which is really shocking, actually. I'm so in love with you. Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers, and we're doing another video outside. Beautiful sun, breathing this fresh air, you guys, and today I'm actually gonna do this video on some surprise master plan community site that I so happened to stumble upon. You guys can see they haven't started stick building yet, but these people actually plan on building an additional 12, this is Meritage community by the way, and they plan on building an additional 12, well not an additional, 1200 homes. They haven't even started yet. So I wanted to show you guys, you know, what it looks like right before they start construction. It's basically just a whole bunch of land. So I'm gonna pan and let me refocus so you guys can see better. Do y'all see all that? That is a lot of land. So we have a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of builders that are still throwing a tremendous amount of money into the housing market still. And today, you guys, we're gonna go over a very intriguing, very interesting article that goes into the facts, okay, to the facts that lenders right now are actually losing money for the first time in history, are actually losing money by providing mortgages. And what that represents, you guys, is a systematic failure. And the reason I wanna talk about all this stuff is one of the things that these systematic failures are gonna do is cause tightening up in credit. That tightening up in credit is gonna hit residential lending. Do me a favor for all the effort for coming out here. I'll probably get kicked off here any second. Do me a favor, you guys, seriously, please, for your boy, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, shoot me a comment below, and understand I'm not wearing a sports jacket because quite frankly, it is getting hot and humid here in Texas. It's really, really interesting to see how these communities, these master communities actually start out. So you guys can see they actually make the streets and infrastructure first. So it's it's wild. All of these streets have names, there's stop signs, but there's no houses whatsoever. Now, regardless, you guys, the name of the article that we're gonna dig into today to kind of spell out the next or additional systematic failure is housing is so unaffordable that banks are losing money for each mortgage they finance for the first time ever. So just again, just only the title of this article, think about that for a second. If lenders can no longer make money offering mortgages, what do you think they're gonna do? You think they're gonna keep lending to people? I don't think so, you guys. They cannot make money right now on mortgages. That's the first time ever. That is a massive systematic failure. No one's done anything wrong, and yet they're losing money by doing loans. Shocking, don't you guys think? But either way, you guys, we're gonna dig into this article. I don't know if I'm gonna stay in this community because there's so much wind, but again, this is, you know, and I know you guys, builders are smart. They know what to do, right? They have all this money. But the thing is, everyone's smart until they're rug pulled. And then normally, a lot of people lose everything because they're blindsided. You guys see the construction behind me? Y'all see all that? How much money do these people have that are, you know, they're just throwing it at the housing market right now. But either way, let me bring up three bullet points that this article is gonna mention, okay? Starting with the first one. Housing is so unaffordable, banks lost money for each mortgage they financed in 2022, a report found. And that is, to me personally, y'all, being that I'm in mortgage, that is shocking to me. Now the second bullet point. Some providers averaged $301 loss per loan, a first recorded by the Mortgage Bankers Association. So they're saying the average loss is $301 per loan. And that may not sound like a lot, but people are in business to make money, not lose money. Now the third bullet point, it attributed that largely to the increased cost of financing a loan and decreased housing demand. So it's more expensive to actually service the loan and get the loan done and demand has been completely crushed. So again, you guys, this is going to highlight an additional black swan, an additional systematic failure that's happening. And I believe that's highlighting the fact that right around the corner is going to be some type of credit freeze. So the really interesting things is in many ways, the banking crisis right now is actually worse than 2009. Sorry for the noise, you guys. I am in a master plan community where there's an overwhelming amount of construction going on. And I can't see if my exposure's okay because I am blinded right now 
by the light. In 2022, independent mortgage banks and mortgage subsidiaries of chartered banks lost an average of $301 for every mortgage they financed, the association said in a recent report. That represents, and listen to this, you guys, that represents a 113% decrease, 113% decrease from last year's average of a profit of $2,339 a mortgage. And it is the first time that banks posted a negative profit for financing home loans since the NBA began recording profits in 2008. This has essentially never happened before except potentially in the 2008 subprime collapse. Amazing thing about all this, and this is why I'm saying this is a systematic failure. We don't have an increase in foreclosures and in defaults in the residential sector. Banks are suffering right now because the economy is trash and because the result of the money printing and cheap interest rates, the money printing and the low interest rates absolutely wrecked us. I mean, it's clear. These systematic failures are not a result of these higher interest rates. We've had high interest rates before. Systematic failure, y'all, is because we had low interest rates for too long. Y'all see how I'm jumping around in my scenes? I hope you guys like that because it's way harder to jump around scenes and carry on the video and carry on the message. And my, you know, my side story here is, is like, my gosh, look at this community. It's, I'm in another part of it. I mean, I'm just driving around in separate sections in this community and it's just so big, you guys, that I should be able to have enough, you know, shots to take, but I may leave because I do not like the wind. The wind is obviously horrible when it comes to audio, but jumping back into this article, that's largely due to the decrease in housing activity. MBA's vice president of industry analysis, Mariana Walsh, said in a statement, Prospective buyers are holding back from the market as mortgage rates hover near 20-year highs and limited housing supply keeps home prices elevated. Banks and other mortgage companies each financed an average of 2.6 billion loans in 2022, roughly half the 5 billion figure in 2021. A lot of people are afraid how much demand is pent up on the sidelines, but here's some news for you guys, and I've been doing this over 20 years, okay? So over 20 years in the business, demand has always been on the sideline, you guys. Demand has always been, you know, exploding on the sidelines. The thing is why we have a balanced housing market is most people don't do what is required typically to purchase a house. When the lenders and when the federal government deregulates or opens the floodgates of demand, it doesn't matter how much inventory we have. It's not gonna keep up with the overwhelming hyper demand. And the other thing, most people aren't purchasing right now, not necessarily because of the limited supply. There's another giant category of people that are not purchasing, quite frankly, because they've been priced out. The housing market is absolutely gutted right now. The housing market is absolutely broken. We're starting to see some of the dust settle and now we're starting to see the systematic failures and I hope you guys see it too. Y'all, I had to get out of there. It was just way too windy to be able to do a video. So my wife and I are actually now on the way to get some lunch and you guys probably know where we're going to get lunch, sushi. Now here's the thing, I tell you guys, don't spend your money. We're gonna spend it a little bit on sushi, okay? It is what it is. But here's the thing, you guys, our mindsets need to be positive. We need to love life and I enjoy spending time with my wife having sushi. But either way guys, let me jump back into the article right now before getting sushi. The article goes on. Meanwhile, the cost of financing a loan has gone up as the decline in workers isn't fast enough to make up for the decline in business. Banks and mortgage companies have spent an average of $10,624 to finance each home loan in 2022, which represents a 23% cost increase in 2021. So the reality is, you guys, lenders right now are getting hit with a double whammy. It's more expensive to run their business and there's much less business to begin with. So again, more and more and more pressures being put on the banking sector, which, which I'm saying is more than likely going to turn into additional credit restrictions in the housing market, specifically in residential. We already know it's happening commercial. I'm specifically saying it's also gonna happen in residential. I hate that my lighting's messed up. That's why I have to play with my angles all the time, you guys, because the lighting is so important. You guys know I'm a cinematographer. I absolutely love video. Uh, so I really hope you guys like these types of videos because it takes a tremendous amount of effort. But, but so far, you guys, do me a favor. Based on what we've looked at so far, and based on what we read so far, do you guys think that the lenders losing money on mortgages, do you think that will 
result in additional credit tightening. Do me a favor, you guys, comment below. Let me know if you think this is gonna lead to additional credit tightening, and also let me know if you also agree with me that this is a systematic failure. I mean, if lenders are losing money, letting people borrow their money, y'all, how is that not a systematic failure? So y'all know how people say that some of the best places to eat are like a hole in the wall place? Well, I certainly hope that this sushi is good to eat because we have found a hole in the wall place and uh, that's where we're gonna have our sushi. So wish us luck as we go in there. Now jumping back into the article, the rapid rise in mortgage rates over a relatively short period of time combined with extremely low housing inventory and affordability challenges meant that both purchase and refinance volumes have plummeted. The stellar profits of the previous two years dissipated because of the declining volume, lower revenues, and higher costs for loans. So again, it's really easy now at this point, you guys, really, really easy to, you know, to determine now through the situation, through the data that they got rug pulled just like so many other people. The rug pull, again, it was not the rates going up, although the rates did double in one year. It's never done that. The rug pull was going from normal rates to low rates and people thinking that for some reason that would last forever. Now, people are starting to realize that actually low rates are not gonna last forever, and not only will they not last forever, it's actually the reason why we have the problems that we have right now. All right, so I did get permission to film on the inside of the restaurant, which is really shocking, actually. So, I'm gonna take you guys in here and to my wife and I's table, and we're gonna finish out this article right now. Let me sit down real quick, you guys can see. Can you guys believe that they let me uh, record in here? Pretty crazy. And to be honest with you, I just don't think that they realized what I was asking. But real quick, let me finish out this article so we can get started on eating. Now, the article concludes, the US housing market may see a huge correction, some experts said last year, as the shrinking demand leads to a drop in home prices. Less demand, home prices should drop. Home prices could fall by 9% this year, one of MBA board members previously said. Other experts have predicted a milder correction, with one National Association of Realtors economists predicting that prices had already bottomed out and the housing market could see a rebound. So all in all, you guys, you know that I'm saying that there is definitely 100%, at least in my opinion, much more pain to come. So in other words, if you can wait on buying, you know, wait on buying and don't get stuck and become a potential prisoner of your house. And in other words, you guys, I believe right now, the longer that we wait, the better deal that we can potentially get in the future. Now, when I don't think that anymore, I will certainly tell you, but as of right now, I still think most of us, the best option for us right now is to wait and watch what happens next. So other than that, guys, I'm gonna start ordering my sushi, and I really appreciate you following along with me. Let me know if you want me to continue doing videos outside versus in the studio, and if you're out there investing in real estate, you know I wish you luck, and I hope you win.